Thomas and Paul will speak. The time allows us with four to six minutes. When four minutes pass, timekeeper will show clean sign. Then five minutes pass, timekeeper will show yellow sign. And six minutes pass, timekeeper will show less sign. The speaker still has the time to wrap up for 30 seconds. So try to use the time in limitation and you will be qualified contestant in the future. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Toastmaster Paul, Starfish, Starfish Toastmaster Paul, please. Bum, bum. Bum bum. My father's heart was beating on the wintry plains of North Korea, and a piece of shrapnel was inside of his neck. And he lay there bleeding out, thinking, probably, I'm going to die. A US Marine, a sergeant, came and stopped the bleeding, and he ended up saving him that day. Uh, Eventually, he took him to the U.S. base in Seoul. And after that, the DMZ was drawn and he lost contact with his family. He never saw them ever again. At the base, he grew up there. He was about 13 years old. And this U.S. Marine actually ended up adopting him. And I have no idea whether it is official or not. But when my father turned 18, uh, that US Marine had some tragic accident, heart attack maybe, I don't really know. And so he died. And he, he had asked his friend, he said, you know, if, if anything happens to me, I want you to look out for this kid. Um, make sure he can get to America. And the first time he asked, my father said, no, I'm good. I'm gonna stay here. And he was one young man in Korea, Seoul, during the 60s. And everything was very interesting at this time. It was right after the Korean War and everything was booming, but nobody knew him. And he met a girl. And the second time he asked, it was after he started dating the girl, my mother. And now he said, everything is good. I'm gonna stay here. Um, everything is okay, little by little, you know, and you know. But then there were troubles. Um, my mother's family, they, they were part of this giant group that was creating makeup, I guess, in this 1960s era of South Korea. And they hated my dad because he came from nothing. And he had one page on his family registry. And so the third time the friend asked, he said, hey, do you want to come to America? My mom was already pregnant with my oldest brother. And my dad said, yes. And he took my mom. He took to America. And, you know, eventually they had a life in Los Angeles. It was a beautiful one. It was a great one. It was a simple one. They had two boys that were similar in age, my two brothers, growing up in Los Angeles until the Los Angeles riots someday, one day in 1991 or 1992, where there was a man on the street. Um, he had been pulled from his truck and somebody hit him with a brick. Uh, somebody else had been beaten up by police, four of them actually. And then throughout the legal battles and troubles, America acquitted them, which means that they were free. Right? They were free. They, they beat up an African-American and it was filmed by a Korean guy. Um, but then they were acquitted. And so the riots began. And eventually, as an outcome, my father's business was burnt down to the ground. And, and so we ended up moving to Oregon uh, to try to start a new life. But then he passed away. My mom passed away when I was five, before this. And so I was 13 years old in Oregon, hiding from uh, the authorities, my, my teachers, my school, 
that I was living by myself because I didn't want to get sent to an orphanage. And so it was a life of, uh, of building, right? Of, of trying to survive in this world, um, prioritize things, learn, try not to be down and dark, try to lead people into something great, uh, try to learn something really, little by little, bit by bit. And, you know, today, uh, these days I have, I have two loving sons um, in my life and my wife is Thai. Uh, I met her in Hawaii a very long time ago inside of a hostel and I was working there. And I said, hello, my name is Paul. And then she walked away. <laughs> um, now I married her and I have two babies with her. Um, so she didn't like Varang at first. Right? She didn't like foreigners at first. And it was a long time ago. Um, but I like dancing. Right? Uh, this was a very long time ago. Uh, this is where um, I'm dancing with my son and we have some trendy stuff on TikTok. And uh, this is my second son here. He's, he's very chubby. Uh, but we're also trying to teach each of the rhythm. Um, I believe music and art and, and every ability, technical or artistic, they, they combine in humans to achieve something great. And you can't really be focused on one side or the other. Um, I hope that the timer is working well because I have no idea at this point. And so this is a quick slideshow of what my life is like today. Um, we have really, really some very odd spectrums here um, in my life where this lady right here was a very powerful person connected to some very powerful people. And uh, she creates a life helping with many things in English and goals in her, in her company. Um, this right here is a lady who just entered our team and over three years in Thailand, no one would hire her, even though she could get more than an 8.0 on her IELTS. And so, these days we, we work, we work very hard and we, we try to teach people how to filter information, how to improve their language skills, how to find efficient ways to use digital literacy and all the free tools out there to, to make different chances, to, to make different, different opportunities, little by little. And right now, these days we have nine scholarship students who We've been teaching for about three years now, and we teach them every week, face-to-face -face before and online. Uh, we actually have a kid whose name is Hero. His nickname is actually Hero, right? Um, Apple and Love. We actually have a kid named Love. His nickname is Love. So they go to Wat Bak Por, which is a temple school. Um, and if you're Thai, you'll know that it's by the river uh, where Pima has his story. Pima, ka, right? That's <laughs> Scary story over by the gusts. I'm gonna look quickly, right? Like, uh, yes, it's scary. Um, but fate or destiny or serendipity, I don't know. Uh, who knows, really? But there are nine of them, and we're trying to add more. Um, and we teach them every week, and we're going going two times a week, and it's it's an interesting thing. It really is. It's beautiful. Um, each life, each life really has lots and lots of different impact and. Really, you do one thing or you open opportunities for someone through some network or some comments or some feedback, and it really creates ripples uh, and it, of change throughout the world that are immeasurable, unmeasurable. You can't measure them. Um, you know, one guy, his name is Lord Kelvin. He said, if it cannot be measured, it cannot be improved. But then there are always two sides to the coin. Am I running out of time? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is that the time warning? That's the time warning. Okay, I need two more minutes. May I request two more minutes? Yes. No, I cannot. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you oh, very much. Oh, the next chapter. The next chapter for another time. Uh, yes. Start to be continued. Thank you very much, Master Paul. We have learned a lot from your life, and we know you more better. It's just like friend talk to friend. Very wonderful. And now we go to the next speaker. The next speaker is our long-time speaker, Toastmaster Young. He will deliver speed, level five, project one, high performance leadership for speed. And before he will deliver, may I invite his personal orator, DTM Chulak, to lead the objective, please.
BDM Chulak. Hello, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the purpose of this speech, of this project is for the member to apply his or her leadership and planning knowledge to develop a project plan, organize a guidance committee and implement the plan with the help of the team. Time five to seven minutes, Toastmaster Young. Master Chong Five to seven minutes. When five minutes pass, clean side. Six minutes pass, yellow side. And seven minutes pass, left side. Still have the time to lap up 30 seconds. <coughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Toastmaster Yong's Project 2 Promos, Lam Tong Toastmaster Cup. Project 2 Promos, Lam Tong Toastmaster Cup. Postmaster Young, please. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Today, our meeting, our committee meeting, this is first year, first time for this year. And we are Lam Tong Toastmaster Club. We might need to do something new. I think we, when we look at last year, I think we need to improve something. I got some idea to present our committee meeting today. I got a plan to promote Lam Tong Toastmaster Club. And also what we get from this, we, will, we may get uh, increase our member. So the first thing I would like to present it to, to everybody here is I wanted to separate uh, two, two, two procedure. The first one, we are in COVID situation. So what we will do to promote our Toastmaster Club. In each meeting, I would like we to help each other to invite people to come in our meeting because let them come to look, to see what we are in here and then try to observe which one that interested to join us. Then we can follow and try to get them to be our member. So that's what I plan to do. And one more thing, very important, because our meeting, I would like to, I think everybody know here, I think the atmosphere. I can uh, tell about atmosphere. Have you heard about Liverpool in England? In that stadium, they got beautiful atmosphere and people love to go there. Even this is the soccer play, sorry, I forgot to talk about. This is the soccer play and they play in beautiful atmosphere. People love to come, love to watch. And now I'm a fan of Liverpool more than 20 years. So we love to, do something to make our meeting to be a better atmosphere. So we might do that. This is the, the first one in situation of COVID situation. And if the COVID situation is gone, we might do the promote better one. What I try to uh, think and gather all my plan is the first thing is try to promote in school or university. This place gonna be many people, many students interested to improve English. What we will do about to get them to come to our meeting. If no COVID, we can go straight to their school, to their university. Ask them, could you give a chance to let us introduce our club to your school, to university. So if they know what we do and what they will get from us, 
I think they will come to join us to see, to watch what we will do because this is gonna be benefit for them, for students in universities. Another one I would like to suggest to promote our club. I mean, if no COVID situation, we talk about the company because uh, we, this is another way to promote. We will try to get to their place. What we can do, ask them, ring them, give us a chance to introduce ourselves, to give them what we do in Toastmaster Club and try to give them what they will get from our club. I think the way we do this way, I think we have to specific to the company that they need English. People who work for them, they need English. So they our club as well. Another one, I think this is good for our community. We can promote our club to our community. You, we can imagine if we got a small community, like a village. So if we like to get people to come to join us or to let them know or to, to, cons to involve us, we can do by promote to them how to do, how to do very important because they got village is very hard, but I got experience to let people know because I used to be a Thai food shop owner. So I can get people get uh, to come to my shop. So the way I do, I will make the brochure or leaflet in the paper. So first we do, we can, we can do like a soundtrack or broadcasting car. We drive around, use microphone, and tell them, hey, this is Lam Tong Toastmaster Club. What we will give to you, what will you benefit from us? This is, I think people, they know and they can come to join us. And this is another one. And another one is, this is uh, my, ex my, ex my experience because I do a lot of living in, uh, in the past because I got a Thai food restaurant. I do live that and I can put to the letter box, house by house, how by how. This is Lam Tong Toastmaster Club. Come to join us at the, where, that the, that the uh, somewhere in your community. So they know in the paper and they can come to join us. And that time we can introduce ourselves, give them some knowledge, what they can benefit from us. This is what I try to, uh, what I have planned. If you have anything to add more, so you can come up and, hey, Jung, this is another one. So if no one else, I would like to share something because our club is the club that non-profit. We don't do business. The way we do, we will try to Give them that this is good for them. This is benefit for them for the future or whatever happen in the future. They can be something, they can be speaker. They can improve, they can work in high position. So that's what I share with you today. Back to you, Hap. Thank you very much, Thomas Young. Oh, you have a guest idea, really wonderful invite people come to our club, makes our club ever feel better and promote our club to school, university, and the community. Oh, <coughs> that is really good idea. Now we go to the next speaker. The next speaker come from Australia. He is young, handsome, energetic, and friendly. Tonight, he will speak in unclassified speech. Her personal, his personal writer is 
con más de Chudax. No. No. Objective. So. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Toastmaster Terror. Casey. <laughs> Casey Corwis. Casey Corwis. Toastmaster Terror, please. I'll write that. I thought I meant to write COVID crazy, but anyway, that's much of a muchness, isn't it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to set your brains alight a little bit, just so that we can look at COVID from different points of view, I hope. Now, in Thailand, I keep hearing about people dying from the COVID vaccine. Okay, now, my wife shows me nearly every night somebody either dead or severely affected by the COVID vaccine. We have relatives who have their hair falling out and they've cut the hair short. Now, why is this not available on the news? I don't understand it. But anyway, if you go to the CDC in America, you'll find an odd 20,000 people who've already died from the COVID vaccine in the United States. So that's official. You can do that. But of course, in Thailand, there's no statistics. The interesting fact about it is, is that if you're vaccinating people and they're dying, particularly athletes from cardio or sorry, myocarditis, and they're dropping dead on the field and things like that. I, I don't understand why the media doesn't highlight something like that. And the big question is, yeah. <laughs> the big question is, is that how many people have got to die before it makes the news? And how many people have got to, what's a good number? to say it's for our greater good. It's the new normal people dying from COVID-19 vaccines. How many deceased people do we need is a good number, a still a safe number and say, well, the vaccines are safe. Or is there a new meaning to safe? What's safe? I would call safe and effective zero deaths. But I can promise you, you're not even close to zero deaths. There are many, many deaths from vaccine, including people in Thailand who they have video dropping dead after the vaccine. And I'm not talking about long time dead. I mean, they've hardly got out of the vaccine center. We've got videos of it. So how many? should die from the vaccine. What's a good number? What do you think? Is, it a, is there a good number? Safe and effective vaccine. I'll tell you the second thought, or many thoughts I have. But when you take away people's freedom, now you guys have all had freedoms taken away from you, I promise you. How much violence has been created in this world by people having their freedoms taken away? It's amazing. You don't have to look far into history to see extreme violence when people have had their freedoms taken away. I mean, you've got to be very careful with this. It's not something to take lightly. Now, we only have to look at what's going on in Europe at the moment. Amazing amount of violence in Europe. Maybe a little bit more eccentric in the United States. There's violence. There's certainly violence in Australia. Because people have had normal freedoms, normal expected freedoms taken away. And there's mandates out there that people have to take vaccines when they absolutely 100% do not want to. And you can understand that. 
I tell you what, the virus has stopped being a pandemic. Do you understand that? It's not a pandemic anymore. It's an endemic. In other words, everybody is going to catch the virus, whether you like it or not. It's changed from a pandemic to an endemic. And Australia's towing the line. Before, stop the virus, close the international borders, shut everything down and shut everybody out. Now, oh, we've got to live with the virus and let everybody catch it. I'm absolutely appalled. How can governments change their mind just like that? How can the WHO just change its mind from being a pandemic to an endemic? Let everybody catch it. What the hell? I'm just amazing. I'm amazed. Now, the people who are a little bit thinking like me and refuse the vaccination... I'm surprised they seem to be the most healthy people around. The people who actually refuse the vaccination because they're thinking about their personal health. I'm really surprised that the number of people that think about their personal health have actually refused the vaccine. It's like the percentage of people in the medicinal, in the medical world know about it and they've refused the vaccine and I completely understand. And I'm talking about nurses, doctors and others. They've actually had to quit their jobs, get out of the industry for a while until the vaccine mandate changes and then maybe they can go in. We've got a problem with pilots at the moment. Pilots who can't pass their medicals and are not allowed to fly anymore because of they were vaccinated and now they got myocarditis. They're not allowed to fly their planes anymore. It's getting quite serious. I just smelled a rat recently. South Africa, right, decided to tell Pfizer to take their vaccines back. Now, there's lots of coincidences like this, but as South Africa told Pfizer to take their vaccines back, all of a sudden, Omicron started in South Africa. Hmm. It's just another coincidence, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe. Maybe. I'll tell you a first. This is the first time in history that the ineffectiveness of a medicine is blamed on the people who didn't take it. Now think about that. This is the first time in history that the ineffectiveness, in other words, they don't really work, is blamed on the people that never took it. How do you work that one out? I'm just astounded that it can actually happen. Or the vaccines, but the vaccines are not working. You've had your first dose, you've had your second dose to support the first dose. It didn't work. You've had the booster. And now they're telling us it doesn't work against Omicron. You're going to get it. Matter of fact, none of the vaccines ever stopped you catching COVID-19. None of them. Not one. They have not got a vaccine for COVID-19. And what really gets me was that the RNA vaccines when they were first experimented on before COVID-19, they gave it away because it killed all the animals that they 
experimented on. Isn't that funny? So they dropped animal trials and they just started with human experimental trials and we're it. I'm just shocked about the whole thing. Well, look at it this way. According to the government and every pharmaceutical industry in the world, the WHO, the CDC, the whatever they call it in the United Kingdom, they never bothered looking at anything but the vaccine, did they? They never looked at early treatments and they refused to trial, clinical trial, any early treatments. The vaccine was it. That's the only thing. They didn't give you any alternative and they didn't try to do any alternative. So what's that about? It's only about money. That's all it's about. And now they're making, vaccine companies are making $90 million a day. And because that's gonna slowly decrease now, they're coming after your children. They want to make more money and they really don't care. A little bit, little bit like the Chinese Communist Party, they just don't care. So they're coming for your children. You wait and see. It'll be on. And later on, in a few years' time, we'll be looking back. Think, what were we thinking? What the hell were we thinking when we tried to treat COVID-19? Millions dead for nothing. Absolutely nothing. For money. Back to you. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Thomas. Thank Thomas Helwell. This is very wonderful information. We love your story. And now we go to the next section. The next section is the time for us to see the middle and to improve our performance. This is the time of general evaluation and this section will conduct by general orator. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our general orator. Long time ago, he used to, he, he helped our club. He is our president and he, he is DTM Pipas. Please welcome DTM Pipas, please. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Chok Chai. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the evaluation session. Now is the time for everyone to hear, to learn, and listen to the evaluations from our Toastmasters peers who are more experienced or who have different points of view. We learn from people in Toastmasters. That's, that's how we learn and improve. And the first person in the team I'm going to call upon is our timekeeper, because I would like everyone to know the time performance of every speaker today. All right, so Toastmaster, distinguished Toastmaster Jindarak, are you ready? Yes. Okay, so please give it up for our timekeeper, DTM Jindarak. Mm -hmm. Hold on, my mobile is not working. <laughs> okay. I have to, hold on. Yes. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, especially General Evaluator, Distinguished Toastmaster Pipat. And today, as a timekeeper, you know, our members have to exercise time management. That is why timekeeper is important and time is important as well. This is why our speakers 
performance is recorded. And even our club's performance is recorded as follow. Our president opened the meeting at 6.30 sharp. And for the respond, table topic respondents, let me report as an individual so that this is a new year already. Then we know how time taken, how time consumed, and we can improve ourselves for the table topic session. Our first respondent, distinguished toast, Master took two minutes and 22, 20 seconds. Two minutes and 20 seconds. And second respondent, competent Toastmaster Trevor took two minutes and 20 seconds, 20 seconds. The third Toastmaster Young took one minute and 44 seconds. The fourth distinguished Toastmaster Pipa took two minutes and 10 seconds. The fifth Toastmaster Paul took more than three minutes. And the last Toastmaster Thomas took one minute and 47 seconds. And for the timekeeper, I have some advice that those respondents or speakers who speak below two minutes, you can extend or answer more in your content, in your content or your answer up to two minutes when you see red side, then you stop, you can conclude your statements so that you can practice more and use time wisely, more wisely. And we have recess for 10 minutes. For prepared speech, prepared speech speeches, the first speaker, Toastmaster Paul, for his icebreaker, four to six minutes, he took eight minutes and 15 seconds. For the second speaker, Toastmaster Young, Time allowed five to seven minutes. He took seven minutes and 45 seconds. And the third speakers, Competent Toastmaster Trevor for unclassified speech covers crazy. Eight minutes and 10 seconds. Time allowed eight to 10 minutes. Time taken 11 minutes and 44 seconds. And for the time, I won't say much because the personal evaluator will be the person who mentioned it. And this is the term report up to now. Thank you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Madam Tamer, DTM Chindara. Well, DTM Chindara today wears so many hats as a, a club president, as the what table topics master, and also as a Tamer. So understandable that sometimes she has to she struggled a little bit with the devices and the functions, right? So thank you so much, DTM Jindara, for your help today. All right, so let's go to the personal evaluators. Today we have two personal evaluators, but they are going to evaluate three speakers who are interesting, right? So let's go with the first personal evaluator, we have Toastmaster Thomas, who is going to evaluate Toastmaster Paul, our new Toastmaster. So please welcome Toastmaster Thomas. Uh, thank you, General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters and Toastmaster Paul. First of all, thank you very much for your speech. I guess with icebreaker speeches, there's, there's two questions that are always troubling. The first is, having so many things to talk about, how many should you select? And then the second question might be, why would the audience be interested in anything of my life? Well, everybody's interested in everybody else. But first of all, I thought your speech was intriguing, particularly your introduction. I thought it was excellent. I loved what I would classify as your strategic pauses. 
really good. And the body of your speech, there was an element of heroic content there, I felt. Well, the ending wandered and wandered and wandered a little bit more up to <laughs> eight minutes, 15 seconds. Entirely understandable. Let me make some recommendations to you. First of all, there's a lot of emotion in your speech. It's certainly the first part of it. But I didn't get the vocal variety there. Burnt to the ground, for example. So sometimes if you can inject some vocal variety at these key points, or key parts of your speech, then the audience will certainly appreciate what you're saying much more. Please look at the camera. Throughout your speech, you were looking away. Not for inspiration, but you were just looking away. It's a difficulty we all have. I have it in particular. But please look at the camera because we, the audience, want to see you looking at us. Obviously keep within your time limit. And this is a reflection of the structure of your speech. If you have four to six minutes, maybe your introduction is one minute, your conclusion is one minute, your body is four minutes, for example. And try and stick with that. Because again, your audience is expecting to hear you for six minutes and not longer. And the last point I would make is try not to deviate from your script. Your script, I thought, was excellent at the beginning, but you wandered off telling us about the job that you're in at the moment, rather than a little bit more about yourself. Other than that, most interesting, most enjoyable, and well done. Thank you again. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Thomas, for your evaluation. I think it was a very useful one. Paul, uh, Toastmaster Paul can learn something from the evaluation, all right? This is personal opinion. So if you like it, take it. If you don't like it, please don't do anything to Thomas, all right? He's our member as well. <laughs> all right, so thank you so much. And thank you, Thomas and Paul for evaluation and the speech. Wow, I see you are writing it down. So please give both of them a big, big round of applause. Thank you, thank you. And may I just mention, General Evaluator, that I will complete the evaluation form and send it by email to Toastmaster Paul. Sure thing, thank you so much. All right, so let's go to our second personal evaluator. We have distinguished Toastmaster Shula, who is going to evaluate Toastmaster Yong. So please welcome. Our, our personal evaluator, distinguished Toastmaster, Chulak. DTM Chulak. Mr. General Evaluators, and especially Toastmaster Yong, I really like your initiative and your idea to develop the Lantong Toastmaster Club. We need all those things, really to make it happen. All your suggestions, wonderful. You, know, you have the way how to draw people in, how to take care of the people, how to manage, make them feel happy and join our team like a football. So if they have the feeling, they will come. That is very good. This evening, all what you mentioned is very useful. But uh, the requirement of the speech is for you to set up a team and then put all your ideas together and let the team help you to make it happen. Because all these things, you cannot do it by yourself, right? So this project requires you to put all that together and set up a team to help you make it happen. So. 
whatever you mentioned this evening is very useful. If you have the team, and then if you assign the team to help you, then it's the requirement of the speech. This evening you talk about all the plan, but no connection with the team, how to make it. Okay. So I think you still have another one, the same project, how to make the team work. Then you can use all your knowledge that you present today to put in a team and make it work in the second speech. So it's connecting, these two is connecting each other. This evening, you have done a very good job. You have good voice as you try to do. You speak slowly, your English was improving and I found it very good. So you meet the requirement in how to make the cup better, but through the team. So you forgot to put the team. So next time, try to make the team work. And then I think you will meet the objective. I appreciate your effort. All what you have mentioned, I and the whole committee used to do it. It's not easy, very tough, but it's fruitful, especially going to the university, going to uh, the school to promote, so on and so forth. So without a strong team, it's really difficult. So I think your speech is very good one, except the objective, okay? And the time spent, very good, just a little exceeding 7.45, so never mind. Okay, congratulations. Try to improve in the next one, okay. Thank you so much, Dis distinguished Toastmaster Shu Lak, for the evaluation of our Toastmaster Yong, the second speaker. And we have a guest joining our meeting at the moment. We have Miss or um, future Toastmaster, I would call Anisha. Anisha, are you here with us? Yeah, yes, sir. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Welcome to our club. We are a uh, Lamtong Toastmasters Club. We are now in the evaluation session. I hope earlier you heard the speeches of our speakers, and now uh, we are giving feedback to the speeches. All right? Yes. Okay, okay. I hope you enjoy the evaluation here. So, yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. So, let's move on. We have our third speaker who volunteered to speak last minute, but still he could speak for how many, how many minutes? Like 10 minutes, something, right? 11.45. Ah, okay. 11.44. So his personal evaluator is still a distinguished Toastmaster Shula. So please give it up to distinguished Toastmaster Shula. Okay. Uh, general evaluators and Trevor. So nice to listen to your speech and listen to the different ideas that we never heard from anywhere else. So I think it's the courage of you to talk what you believe. You talk about the different angles of the vaccine that hurt people, like losing the hair, like die from the COVID vaccine. And then you talk about cannot guarantee zero debt. And also the worst thing is to take the freedom from you, right? From everyone to lock down, to forbid you to work, forbid you to do this, do that. You have to be on the video instead of 
having offline meeting. So it takes a lot of freedom from you. And then you talk about the immune. It's very funny. The poor country, they don't have money to buy the vaccine. They let it spread and let the people caught the COVID. And then now they have the immune to fight back the COVID without having to inject. This is some, some of your idea that you used to mention very often. I think if possible, I will ask support to invite you to talk in the parliament to help changing the idea of the government that they can do something different. This is the last minute volunteer to speak without prepare. And you gave a wonderful speech. I think whether it's work or not, it's never mind. But the way you present the, the sincerity, the thought that you have, you are already convinced and present to all of us. And this is the really good example of being a good speaker, how to convince people in the different angle, even though they don't believe, but you can just mention and make your belief pass it through the other. Only the time that if you can control, like me, prepare a few sentence for crossing. When the red side comes like this, okay, I listen to you. General evaluator, when the red side comes, I listen to you. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, distinguished Toastmaster. Good luck for the evaluation. And yes, we see that he has a very good technique to evaluate, right? In Toastmasters, it's normal that people will have different points of view. It happens, right? But when, when we evaluate, we evaluate the techniques they use to present their ideas, not the ideas themselves. So that's what DTM Chulak did with his evaluation today. I think that was a very good thing. Thank you so much, DTM Chulak, and also Toastmaster Trevor for sharing his ideas with us last minute speech, right? Amazing. Thank you, everyone. And now let's come to the general evaluation of today's meeting, starting from the president. Today, president opened the meeting right on time at 6.30 p.m. sharp. What an amazing performance today. In Toastmasters, we encourage everyone to come before 6.30 just to get to know each other a little bit or get prepared, be ready for the meeting, right? Then 6.30 sharp, we start the meeting. Thank you, President, for doing that. Followed by the Vice President Education. I'm not sure if he's still Vice President Education, but he is very active in our club, and that is competent Toastmaster Chok Tai. Right. Today, he prepared the agenda, he prepared who is going to speak what, and he also do a role of Toastmaster of the day. Also, he's the one who wears so many hats today. As the Toastmaster of the day, right, Toastmaster Cho Chai, I feel that you have done your job completely from the opening, I mean, from, from the introduction of Toastmasters meeting to the table topics, job telling, break, prepare speeches, and the evaluation. I think you have done completely your job completely. Only a few things I can personally suggest you, Toastmaster Cho Chai. Number one is, uh, you surprised me a few times <laughs> when you called me for the toast table topics master, right? I was surprised like, oh, am I? <laughs> but that's okay. We, we have the real table topics master, it was master Jindarat, right? That's uh, the only one thing I can suggest you is to call the right person, right? Otherwise you will surprise people, including me. I was surprised. 
So thank you so much, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Chok Chai, for doing your job completely today. Thank you, thank you. Now let's go to the table topics master. We have the real table topics master, distinguished Toastmaster Jin Dara. She played it very easy today. <laughs> Only one question for everyone, right? What is your new year resolution? And she asked six people and we got six different answers from six members. Starting from DTM Shulak, of course, he volunteered to speak first every time. His new, year, his new year resolution, looking at the camera, and he did it today, right? Thank you, DTM Shula, for doing that. Now we can look at you in the eyes when you speak. Thank you so much. It looks a lot better, I'm telling you. Yes. And also, DTM Shula mentioned something about his work and his sales target this year, right? That's something personal that he would like to share with us today. Next person, we have competent Toastmaster Trevor. I think Trevor opened his speech with something very interesting. He wants to wake the world up. And that's a very interesting sentence to begin a speech with. He wants to wake the world up. And then he explained a little bit what issue that he would like the world to know. And we cannot trust the politicians. <laughs> Still, we cannot trust them. Right, but, but I like the way he started his speech today. Number three, Toastmaster Yong, he spoke about English. He gave some examples. He explained why English is important for him. And he's going to do something to improve his English. I think that's a very good structure, right? Answer, examples, reasons. Those are things that we can use in impromptu speeches. And then, this DTM Pipat did answer something, and I'm not going to evaluate him. He's a good speaker already, all right? Number five, we have Toastmaster Paul. And Toastmaster Paul, well, in, in table topic session, we have one to two minutes, all right, not three. So after this, you are going to learn gradually, bit by bit. So one to two minutes for this. You spend a little longer, about uh, three minutes something. Right, but, but it was a good speech, right? It's your personal story. So now, but nobody can complain anything. It's your personal story. Only one thing is, uh, Toastmaster Paul, I felt the, the introduction was a little bit too long when you were talking about the importance of setting goals. Uh, I think that that took about more than one minute already. So in, in this session, spend about 30 seconds to one minute for the introduction and then the rest can be for the body and conclusion yeah but i like your answer anyway paul keep keep it up editing videos right maybe one day you can help the club edit some videos in the future and last but not least toastmaster thomas right the last speaker he spent one minute and 47 seconds uh, Toastmaster Thomas answered something, and I, I, I personally apologize. I apologize to Toastmaster Thomas because I didn't catch what he said. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't catch what he said. And yeah, but I believe he, he gave a very good speech anyway. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Now, let me move on to the R counter. In Toastmasters, we also try to be aware of the unnecessary filler sounds like the ah, uh, um, um, you know. And we have somebody to help you count these words. Today, the, the R counter is Toastmaster Thomas. Yes, so please help me in welcoming Toastmaster Thomas. Thank you, General Evaluator. Did you understand that? To, oh, great. Wow. Okay, for everybody else, including Trevor, I am now speaking, hopefully, in English. Tonight was actually rather remarkable because we had an insignificant and neg a negligible amount of ahs and ums, etc. 
We really did. So quality in that regard has gone up enormously. We had some so-so and another so-so from TTN Chulak. And we had two OKs, which were not OK, from Toastmaster Trevor. Don't look away, Trevor, I'm speaking. And that was about it, really. Maybe I said something that a few eyes here and there that nobody understood because they couldn't get my accent. And so then, well done, everybody. Back to you, General Evaluator. Well, thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Thomas, for your uh, counter report. So let's move on, right? Do we have the grammarian today? I think we don't. Oh, yes. Okay, we have. So please welcome our grammarian, Toastmaster Trevor. Right. Thank you very much. I mean, I'm competing with a sound factory behind me, and I every time there's a big bang or a bash, I have to turn around and see what the hell? What happened? But it's usually just a kitchen noise or someone slamming a pan or something like that. It doesn't stop here. Okay, sentences, which I love doing. I would stop share. No, you can't say I would stop share. I would stop sharing. I will stop sharing. Okay? Not I would stop share. I will stop sharing. Next one. He is our members many, many years. No, many years back. Okay? He is our members many years back. No, he was a past member and if you'd like to add many years ago, you can. Okay, he was a past member many years ago. This is the most skill for public speaking. This is the most skill for public. This is an important skill for public speaking might be better, okay? This is an important skill for public speaking. But we've got to be careful of overuse of the word important. It gets thrown around in Toastmaster, Thai Toastmaster clubs willy-nilly for everything. Everything's important. Well, it can't be. But yes, it gets thrown around a lot. This is a first. This is an original. We drive around and use microphone. Now, the idea is it's amazing. I've never heard anybody say that before to announce a Toastmasters club. We drive around and use microphone. No, we drive around and use a microphone, but that's not really true, is it? We drive around and use a loud speaker. Okay, a microphone's not gonna help anybody. So we drive around and broadcast with a loud speaker. That would even make more sense. But I love the idea. <laughs> I'm just amazed. You know, I think you've been living in the country a little bit long, you know, where everything's advertised, the movies are advertised out there with loudspeakers and trucks driving around selling stuff. Oh, every day and every way you get trucks driving past your front door with a loudspeaker. It just happens. How time taken? Hmm. It's a bit of a messy one, how time taken. How the time is used might be better or the timing for, say, table topics is and announce it that way or the, the timing for the whole meeting is. So there's different ways you can use it. Now look, every meeting, I see DTM for Pat there and I'm always trying to catch him out, always. Damn, he did a good job tonight. I mean... He was really on fire with his English. He got basically everything correct. The only thing that I didn't particularly like was, and it's not horribly incorrect, he said, he's a good speaker already. Now, that's not really the way to say it. He's a good speaker. Silence. He's a great speaker. But you don't have to say already. That's just a, a thing. Here's another one I don't like, but you could say he's already a great speaker. Well, yes, no. 
I'd, I prefer we just left it at he's a good speaker or he's a great speaker and leave it at that and don't add words at the end because they're just an additional. Now, I, the important, oh, tonight we have, the thing I ought never hear, we keep hearing time is important. Always time, time, time. But there's other stuff that's important. Why doesn't anybody say, the quality of the presentation is important. Boy, I'd love to hear someone say that, just for a change, instead of time is important, time is important, time is important, and on and on it goes. So just be nice. The other thing tonight, <clears throat> nobody said anything that I didn't understand perfectly. Okay, so, so even though we twisted the English again, I understood everything that was said perfectly. Even the concepts, I got it all. Okay? So it doesn't matter about twisted English. I believe the important thing is that I understood it. And that's the good thing. So thank you very much, Toastmasters, one and all. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, our great Marian, Toastmaster Trevor, for, for your help. In Toastmasters, we don't focus on grammar, but it's an important part of a good speech. So that's why we have the grammarian role in Toastmasters who help us with a good English grammar sometimes. So ladies and gentlemen, we come to the last minute of the evaluation session already. Before we end, I have my last evaluation to the table topics master, distinguished Toastmaster Jindara. BDM Jindara, please, I forgot one uh, evaluation to, uh, for you. One important evaluation, so I, I, I want to say it. When, when each speaker finishes during the table topics session, right? Maybe you can try to say something like a thank you or give them a big round of applause before you figure out how to control your devices, right? Otherwise, it's going to be a long pause and people will be uncomfortable waiting for you to, to say something. Yeah, maybe say something first and figure out how to control the devices later, how to manage them later, right? That's the only evaluation I have for you today. So ladies and gentlemen, we finished our Toastmasters meeting already and for guests in Toastmasters, we practice the art of public speaking. And every time we are going to do this in English, we learn from the feedbacks of our Toastmasters friends, we have some people to control the time to record the, hello, can you hear me? Hello. Uh oh, my screen is freezing. Hello. <laughs> yes, that is I'm, why I heard something. I'm back. Yes, I, I, I thank you, you already, and I returned the control to President already. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please, please, thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Day, for your great job, and you have done it wonderfully and successfully. And I hope that everybody enjoy our club meeting tonight. Everybody, please give our Toastmaster of today, the competent Toastmaster Chukcha, a, bang, a thunder roar of applause. Yes. And I would like to announce one thing is that our next meeting on Tuesday, 18 January, will be our club speech contest. And there will be a lot. I would say that we shall discuss together after this adjournment of the meeting. And I would say that happy new year, jumping to the new year 2022 together with a great success of Lamtong Toast Master Club and your business, your family, and your own self. Thank you so much. And 
I would like to call this mailing number 2654 54 adjourn. Thank you.